Hey friends, Joe the Farmer here. In today's video, we're gonna look at this Bighorn Explorer 550. So we have two flat tires. We've run this thing into the ground. <laughs> Need to do a service on it. I haven't done the first oil change on it, which is like way overdue. Great little machine provided to us by Bighorn. This is one of the culprits right here, flat-ish tire. And then we have another flat-ish tire over here. We've had some folks ask us like, what do we think of this machine? I mean, take a look at it, obviously. You know, we're not, we're not this is not the land of make-believe, folks. We're actually using this thing we're seeing what it can do. We're pushing it to the limits. That's what the folks in Bighorn asked us to do. They said, test it, see what you can do with it, see how hard you can push it. And we push it pretty hard. It's been great. It's very comfortable. A couple quirks, you can check that video that we did on our kind of initial review of it, but it's a great little machine. But what I have for this tire, it's just full of soapy water. A dish soap absolutely works the best. We're gonna fill this tire up and then we're just gonna inflate it, see if there's a leak. If there is, we'll patch it. After patching that tire, we'll go to the next one. If not, maybe it's just holding air. Maybe maybe it's temperature change because it's actually beautiful here in Tennessee. Anyway, we're going to get to work on this thing. If you own one of these or if you're thinking about buying one and you say, you know, the biggest knock is where do I get a service? Let me show you how easy it is to service. It's really not hard. A couple of filters and bolts and stuff like that. Very simple tools. You can do this on your own. One thing I'll ask is if this is your first time here and you want to come back, please hit the subscribe. We'd love to have you back. And if you did buy one of these things, from either watching our videos or watching other videos or just walking into a place and seeing it, let us know about it. I'd love to know. I know that these things are selling. So, you know, it's a great machine. I've been excited to use it. And, you know, we got all kinds of stuff out here, all kinds of toys and things to take care of. Right now, I need to get my oil change kit, which should be right up here. Oh, that's, that's actually for the Argo. That's gonna be fun. This place is a mess. This time of year, this place always looks terrible to me at least. Now that it's cooling off, I'm gonna come in here, this place will look acceptable to you all again. So I apologize. It's like having friends over. I just wanna let you know, hey, we haven't cleaned the place, okay? We have kids, you know, what are we gonna do? We didn't have, have bad time, been too busy. Let's talk about this thing. I've talked about this before. I love this. You know, even though my barn has a bunch of oil, you know, stains and spots on it, I do like this because it will uh, absorb oil that goes on the ground. So I'm just pulling over top of that. This is what we'll uh, change the oil on. This machine's pretty warmed up. And I think what we'll do is change the oil first. So yeah, she's got some squeaks. She's got some, she's got some little sounds to her. I think we'll go with the 10W30. Diesel. Oh, vent track oil down. Here's a 10W30. That'll work. Now I'm in Tennessee. In Tennessee, we have a very mild climate. It gets a little violent towards wintertime, but a little, you know, super hot during the summertime. But when I, for this oil change, it's gonna be pretty mild. That's why 5W30, 10W30, it doesn't really matter to us. Uh, make sure you're checking depending where you live. If you're in Alaska, you're gonna wanna do something else. Make things easier on yourself which I've already done, disconnect this piece right here. That's what's sitting up here on the dashboard, that little bushing. I'll show you how to put that back on, but very simple. Uh, you gotta find our oil filter. This is a weird little engine, by the way. I had some folks ask me what kind of oil filter it takes. This is it, I don't know if you can get this on Amazon or not, but I actually got it from the Bighorn uh, dealer, Sun Industries, I think they're called. Here it is, it's hiding. Same color as the engine, so that'll be super easy to get to. Oil filter, really easy. Uh, the drain plug's gonna be in the bottom, super easy. This shouldn't take very long at all. Okay, this is probably the dirtiest part of this whole thing because we gotta get under this machine, but we gotta find the drain plug and go from there. So I'm thinking this machine's a little unique in that the drain plug is on the side. That's gonna be knuckle buster. Ah, uh, there we go. Eat your Wheaties before you do that one, folks. I need to be like my buddy Josh from Stony Ridge Farm and get a lift. I'm gonna move that camera and get y'all a better look. Okay, for the sake of science, I went into the manual, goes through what oils you can use, 10W30 is perfectly fine, and then it shows us where the oil plug is. So almost every machine I have, the oil plug is on, uh, it's under the carriage. This one's on the side, which is why I just wanted to verify. And then right there is obviously where the oil filter goes. So anyway, science. So here's the problem with being a bigger guy. You get under these machines, it's not a lot of fun. And this is 
probably the world's longest oil drain plug. There's a washer on here, a crush washer. Just want to be sure you don't lose that. There we go. Crush washer and drain plug. Not magnetic, but we're gonna take a look at what this oil looks like. Okay, again, in checking this part number, there you go right there, it's 1MR1341100. Oil filter, very simple. You could look at it and just kind of tell it's the exact same thing as down there. I'm gonna get a marker real quick or a uh, ink pen or paint pen and write the date on here that I'm doing this. Since this is gray, a Sharpie will do. So today is September, I think today's September 8th. So let's do that. It's close enough. And then I have my trusty little oil wrench kit, which I'll show you guys this thing again. I love this thing. I'll put a link down uh, in the description if you guys have an interest in this thing, but I just absolutely love it. I think it works great. You can put this on there, work this thing in. Well, we're going the wrong way, aren't we? Whoever's assembling things at Bighorn is absolutely, absolutely taking their vitamins. I'm tired of busting my knuckles for one week, so I'm gonna put these on. That seal's breaking now. My guess is this is gonna be one of those times the gasket will stay on the machine and not come off with the filter. Super important. Gaskets on the machine, that has to come off. Absolutely, absolutely important. Gotta lube the seal, we all know that trick. I'm not gonna put any in there to start it off just because it's sideways and I don't feel like spilling oil everywhere. It'll be perfectly fine, I'm not worried about that. Hand tighten, very simple. All right, so this is pretty easy. Two things that I would say about this machine. First of all, all machines are very simple to service. If you've never serviced one before, this is something you can absolutely do. This one, you have to really dig down into that compartment to get to that oil dipstick because it will screw in it's very stubby. You have to reach really kind of <laughs> around all the muffler. I'll put a video of that in here so you can see what I'm talking about. And then check it. And this right here, these hash marks are gonna tell you if your oil's full or not. I went ahead and refilled it. I didn't wanna do that on camera. You will, in this kind of project, wanna have a really long funnel because if I didn't have this funnel, I'm not sure what I would have been uh, concocting or manufacturing here <laughs> out of all the spare parts and stuff I have. Fortunately, I have a long funnel and this one is just flow tool, extra large funnel. I have no idea how long I've had it or where I got it, but it did its job today. So that was great. Second thing, the drain plug is in a really weird spot. So there's really, really nice uh, skid plating under this machine. So that's the positive. You know, everything is covered. There's, there's really not going to be something that you can hung up on. I think that will damage the components of this machine. However, that drain plug, as we talked about, is on the side. So what I had to use to bust it loose was just one of these. And this is a 15, number 15. I don't work for DeWalt. DeWalt does not give me any kind of kickbacks. Kind of wish they would. Great tools, really happy with them. And then the third thing I used was obviously the filter kit. That thing's great. And here's that oil filter wrench kit. This one was the 67 millimeter or meter M-14, whatever those numbers mean, I have no idea. I'm not a talented mechanic, y'all. I just know that this thing is incredibly helpful with the tractor, the Ventrac, all the side-by-sides. The only thing that I have not found that this has a filter adapter that will do is the hydraulic filters for the tractor. So been super happy with it. I think it was like 70 bucks, like money well spent. All right, I'm gonna throw this stuff back together and then we're gonna show you how to put that bed piece back on and then we're gonna check for leaks. Okay, so all this does is connect with these two bushings right here, just two rubber bushings, cotter pin and a clevis pin, I believe it's called. Bring the bed down a little bit to where, oh, there goes the gloves. I just kind of rest it. Started a little bit, doing this one-handed, so that shows you how easy it really is. Then bring this in. And then get the other rubber bushing. You kind of get the idea of this. This is insanely simple. But those 10 seconds we just did will save you a lot of frustration. Unless you're really, really small. If you're super small, then you don't need to do this. But if you're, you know, normal, normal adult size, <laughs> take this thing off. 
That'll hold. This thing's great. It's the shock absorber that keeps the bed kind of where it needs to be. So anyway, I suggest you do that. Now, we just spray the heck out of these tires with our soapy water solution. And we look for anything that looks like a big, you know, volcano looking thing. And by using dish soap, you can use any soap, but dish soap really works the best in my opinion. Bubbles a lot. You can see a patch right there, I've already patched it. I'm not really seeing anything on here. It looks like a leak. Even that old patch looks like it's holding pretty well. All right, let's go over this other one. It could just be temperature. Sometimes these temps change and things get wonky. Oh, my glove went right in the oil too. Look at that. Oh gosh. Uh, that one may be. And eh, maybe all she wrote for that one. Well, make sure you like this video because I'm gonna have to buy some more gloves. <laughs> yeah, nothing obvious. All right, well, let's maybe back it up a little bit and see if we can find, see if we can find a leak on one of the spots we couldn't get to because the tire is sitting on it. Found one right here. See that bubbling right there? It's tiny, that's a leak. We need to pull forward just a little bit. All right, so we definitely have a hole right there. Pretty clear to see. So we're gonna patch it. This is from a company called Tire Slime. Again, I bought this on Amazon. I go buy a lot of stuff on Amazon. I think all of us do. This tool is super easy. This is called a reamer. Just want to kind of find that and push in. And while that's holding in there, I'm gonna get one of these patches. I need a little bit of strength on this. This is rubber cement. This little patch just goes right through the eye, almost like threading a needle. And the rubber cement acts like a lubricant almost. You want to use plenty of it. And like most things on a farm, it's going to be a messy job. But you want to ream that hole out, make it round. And then all you do, pull that out, push this in, yank out. And that should be patched. That's how quick it is to patch a hole in a tire. Insanely easy. Absolutely no reason you can't do this at home. I've done this on my Silverado, as long as it's a front tire, because I mean, you can, look, you can turn the tire out and it's really easy to access. Rear tires can be a little bit more of a pain, but you know, we're gonna give that a minute or two to set up and then it should be good. Well, friends, I wanna thank you for coming along with me while I serviced the Bighorn 550 EFI Explorer. There's not enough time on it really to be messing with a lot of the grease irks. I already did that when I first got the machine and went through all the grease irks. So I'll do that in another video. It, there's not really a whole lot to it, but as far as changing the oil, got that thing handled. Hopefully we all learned something today. It's the first time I've done it too on this machine. So you, every time you do it the first time, it, it takes a little bit longer and you kind of talk through it. And the advantage of doing a video like this is that I also have the reference to go back and say, gosh, what size filter was that? Or what size wrench did I use? And you know, kind of going through all that. but. Uh, absolutely make sure you document the maintenance on your machine, the date and how many hours are on it when you do it or how many miles are on it when you do it. Um, this particular machine, you know, I, I don't know how long it's going to live the way we treat it, but so far it's really kind of proven that it's, it, it's reliable. We've never been stranded with it. Haven't really had a lot of weird issues with it. Sometimes new machines you, you do. I mean, any machine we've had out here that's brand new is, uh, you know, there's, there's kind of that bathtub effect, which is where at the very beginning you get some issues. Then they all kind of go away in the end of its life, uh, you start having issues. So we expect that. Some of it really is just like getting through the first oil change, getting through that first couple services. And then once you do that, it's cruise control. Probably should have done this a little bit earlier, but I'll be honest with you, as I said earlier, when it's nuclear hot out here, I'm done. Like I want to get the work done and, and, and be out of the heat because it, it can be oppressive here in Tennessee. But we're getting the season now where you feel alive, um, cool breeze, like the season, the, the, so the season we really like, which is hunting season and um, turkey season and deer season and fishing season where you're sitting on the dock and it's actually cool fishing. Um, these are the seasons I really, really enjoy being out here and just kind of getting some work done and always planning for the next year and the next summer and you know get a little projects knocked out. So I appreciate you watching. If this is your first time here, 
please hit the subscribe, come back and see us again. I have a new machine I'm gonna be showing you all soon. I'm not sure if I'll do that video before this one, but uh, excited to show it to you. So anyway, appreciate you watching. I'm Joe the Farmer, we out.